Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Yero speaking and welcome to the introduction spoiler video for multiplayer game number 47. This short video will compose of two parts. In the first, I will introduce the game settings and players. And in the second part, I will do a short summary of the game. So if you do not want to know how the game ended, skip this video and go to the second position of the playlist where the actual game starts. This time I'm playing a six player free for all no quitters game. No quitters is a steam group that gathers people who just want to play Civ without people leaving um, on the mid game. The link is on my main channel page in the about section. Uh, go there, um, follow the link to the group profile, read the rules, join the chat and ask a moderator for an invite and have some cool games with cool people. Settings for this game are quick speed, small size, Pangea, ancient era start, 12 city states and random civilization. This time I rolled Netherlands together in this game uh, we've got Phil, 1465, playing as Assyria, Sound of Birds, playing as Celts, Maxim, playing as the Zulus, and Q Sultan, playing as Egypt, and Biski, playing as Greece. One more information, this game, this time, I only did commentary like on two parts i mean like a first part a little bit on second and then i think fourth or fifth the rest of the commentary will be added after the game so just to let you know if you do not like to you know like listen to me talking about the game after the actual game well you just know about it beforehand and now spoiler alert second warning if you do not want to know how the game went Stop watching right now and go to the second position of the playlist where the actual game starts. My initial approach for this game was that I want to experiment. When I started the game, I had in mind um, Honor, and I mean like, you know, uh, don't go anywhere else, just go Honor and rush someone. Well, as it turned out, I had a pretty nice, um, I had a pretty nice capital. Uh, maybe not that great at start, but with a huge potential for a late game dominance. I mean, like I had four unique luxuries. I had um, seven spots for. Uh, polders, the unique Netherlands improvement. I had two cows, a sheep, uh, a horse. Uh, oh, pretty nice overall, but for the late game. As it turned out, my closest neighbor were Enki Sultan, Egypt, and if you followed my games, uh, my other games, you know, you know that me and Enki Sultan have a history. Uh, usually when we are in the same game we end up warring with each other especially when we are next to each other so what I what I had in mind I did open tradition after all but I did went for warriors and try to ask for city-state tribute and I was just pumping out military units most of the time and NQ Sultan at the same time decided to plant a frontal city right in my face and by by land right on top of my capital so basically i was kind of happy because i was planning to get rid of him uh, as soon as possible <laughs> so my preparations for an attack has been completed uh, well basically I just pump out as many as I could reaching like um, minus 30 percent uh, penalty on production just because I had too many units so my only choice at that point was 
well, hope for the best that my preparation were okay and just enough to take uh, take edge down. He decided to plant one more city, and thankfully for me, um, he started to build great life. So for a moment, he was not punching out military units. So I was really, really hoping that my military advantage at this point of the game will be just enough to take him down. My attack was successful, though NQ Sultan put up a fight um, and after losing his capital he did not uh, leave the game. He left the game when I took his last city, so he was definitely determined to slow me down as much as possible. But in the end, I did manage to uh, get Anki Sultan down. And now the true question were, would I will be able to basically get back in this game because this early aggression slowed me down enormously i mean like turn 17 70 and 20 science that's definitely not looking uh, that's definitely not looking uh, good so basically i decided to keep initially i was thinking about destroying uh, other cities from NQ Sultan and just um, leaving his capital for me but at the end I just decided to um, leave all those cities that I acquired from him because I knew that only with false cities I will be well I will have a slim chance to be able to uh, catch up to the rest of the players After scouting, um, well, after scouting, finally, uh, I had a look at the map and it would seem that Assyria was south of me, but, well, if they would like to reach me, they would have to go through two city-states and through some hostile lands, and on top of that, they had neighbor, Zulus, so... I was not that much afraid that Phil will try to attack me. Uh, on the other side of the map we had Greece and Celts and basically everyone seemed to be peaceful though Celts were having some sort of an army advantage but overall mm, people just tend to have the right amount of units but overall focused on economic development of their civilization so i was struggling very very hard to get my cities up to speed to get as much population as possible especially especially my capital my general plan was to buff up population in my capital as much as possible at the same time trying to develop my other cities uh, so they can work all the good tiles and all the good specialist tiles that would be for Thebes and Heliopolis and then later on pump out as much population in Memphis as well um, because there was that was the only city they that could have observatory so general plan was to have as much population in Amsterdam and Memphis and having a nice population in Heliopolis and Tips to work all the good tiles in my land and work the specialist slots. So I was just working hardly to catch up to every other civilization that have basically peace uh, throughout the game. Basically, military-wise, there was not much happening everybody was trying to have uh, as much economical and scientific advantage as possible though we had the leader in this game that was greece mm, he was basically 
very he had a huge population very huge science lead and quite nice alliance with city states well it was greece right and maxim well, it's very peaceful towards Assyria. Same goes from Assyria towards the Zulus. And uh, Maxim was kind of a... Uh, I think he was sneaking up, in all honesty. He looked uh, a little bit weak at science, but um, he was just preparing to boost as much great scientists later on as he could. So I was still focusing on getting as much science as possible and building my infrastructure so i would have a chance to uh, have a later era war i would say i was really hoping that i can just um, be able to get enough science and the crucial technologies so i will be able to wage war uh, later on against other um, other players so greece well it was kind of, let's make a long story short. Basically, at some point of the game, I was trying to rely, <laughs> to ally people against Greece because he was looking very, very scary. So basically, everyone was kind of in the same mood um, against Greece. So they also thought that he is the leader of this game and needs to be taken out first. I kind of had a deal with Greece. I mean, I kind of I had a deal with Greece that um, we will have peace until any every other player will be dead. But well, sadly, I had to change my mind. And after Greece took Celts, uh, GG Sound of Birds, by the way, um, he was kind of well, it's kind of my fault as well. I mean, like I was making some diplomacy with both of them and I kind of probably made Greece plans a bit faster because I scared him that Zeus are actually so close to XCOM that he will have problems so I think they burned great scientists preemptively uh, especially that Zeus got Hubble telescope but at the end Greece got XCOMs first and he did drop XCOMs on Zeus' capital. But what was good for me, Assyria joined in to help out Zeus, and Zeus' capital was basically in a very good spot. Only three XCOM could attack it. So basically, that attack failed, and Greece used a lot of production to actually attack Zeus, and that attack did not work that well. In the same time, I was still just echoing up like crazy. I was making buildings for experience for units. I took the order uh, freedom policy for uh, uh, faster production of military units. And sadly, I mean sadly, I thought that in this game, this, it was not possible to win without nukes. So I was working towards <laughs> nuclear uh, weapons this time this is how the situation looked uh, right before um, right before my attack I decided to put up as much paratroopers as possible I built up nuclear missiles because well I was hoping well I was hoping I was planning initi initially to attack with nuclear bombs but uh, Argos was just too far it was 12 tiles from my capital so if I wanted to nuke that city without putting a frontal city um, I had to take up to nuclear missiles so I basically did that and I had to delay my attack just um, until I got nuclear missiles but finally I was ready, though, you know, it was like paratroopers versus XCOMs, but I was definitely determined to try and slow, uh, try and slow Greece down as much as possible, because he was definitely getting closer to a scientific victory. Well, he was basically the leader mm, at that point of the game. 
Well, and the war has begun. Well, basically, um, I dropped two nuclear missiles on Argos and I dropped as many paratroopers as possible so I was able to get Argos uh, but basically it was all that I could do at that point of the game because Greece had a huge, well huge, maybe not a huge technolog technological advantage overall but he had those better units, I mean like XCOMs, paratroopers versus XCOMs it's just not going to work so he had a great mobility uh, in his land so there was basically all that I could have done at this point but I was definitely not giving up I knew I had to take Greece capital down if I want to win this game so I was just focused on putting as much units and well my plan was to plan the frontal city uh, plant the frontal city on spices so I would be able to nuke uh, his capital and basically try to do the same with uh, try to do the same what I did in Argos though I kind of shoot myself in the foot but I did um, well I did build up two more nukes I believe Mm, because later on I again nuked Argos uh, what did happen <laughs> well I actually did not plan that but I nuked Argos again and I destroyed that city I forgot that nuclear missiles actually raise cities but the problem was I actually voted mm, I voted on World Congress to ban nukes <laughs> So I banned nukes, uh, well, I was kind of afraid that um, they would get nukes and I would be in trouble. So I kind of thought that it would be better to actually ban nukes, uh, ban nukes than have nukes. Because, well, basically the damage that I wanted to do with nukes, I already did. So it was kind of safer to just um, get rid of nukes in this game and focus on normal... Uh, normal warfare mm, well uh, and on top of that I was just trying to get rid of I was pretty lucky with getting rid of alliances from Greece my spy mm, with a name starting at the T I don't exactly remember the name well he was basically cooping every city-state that he was in successfully so I had a nice streak of coops and I was just getting rid of alliances from Greece mm, and that was definitely helpful so without spoiling any more of the actual war uh, I well I was attacked by Zulus somewhere in the game he switched alliance uh, and decided to actually help Greece by dropping XCOM on me uh, but what I decided and tried to do um, I knew I couldn't take Athens uh, I just did not have the firepower uh, to do it because as I said I banned nukes so I used only one nuke on Athens uh, and that was it so it was not enough to actually get the capital but uh, I I decided to well it was kind of a good plan in my mind I just tried to surround Athens so he would not be able to finish less spaceship parts because he was definitely ahead of me in techno in tech and I was trying to get a science win so I just decided to uh, well basically rush as much and as fast as possible even losing a lot of units to do that but just to surround the capital so he would not be able to transport the last spaceship parts to his capital uh, before I did finish my parts and that basically worked out well so I was able to get a science victory which was basically pretty pretty cool because I definitely was not thinking that I would be able to win this game uh, after I took NQ Sultan 
I thought that I was just too far behind and I would never be able to catch up. But to my surprise, uh, I did manage to do that. So I enjoyed this game very, very much. It was pretty close though. Uh, it was pretty close. I'm like two turns, mm, two turns or like three turns or something like that. So basically uh, each decision in this game mm, that I made, this was basically crucial because if I was slowed down by a couple of turns at some point of the game, I would be late at the late game. So I like those close games when something like is decided in two, three turns after like 230 turns because that means just that somewhere along the game you made the right choices, saving up one or two turns, doing this or doing that and reaching the goal at the end. So. I really really enjoyed this game. Thank you everyone for the game. GG Maxim, GG Biski, GG Phil1465, GG Son of Birds and GG Yankee Sultan. Um, yeah, basically that's it. I invite you to watch the actual game. I like playing this game very very much. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this video will be helpful as usual and I invite you to watch the actual game that is on the second position of the playlist. Though I remind one more time that in this game only two parts uh, are made with the commentary while I was actually playing. The rest um, I will be adding Mm, slowly basically yeah, I will be adding slowly the later parts so if you really want to <laughs> watch the last parts just give me some time probably a couple of days uh, before I will be able to record the commentary because I'm pretty busy uh, at the moment so well basically this could take even more I mean like probably I will finish uploading the last parts next week but I will definitely do it. I will try to add the commentary maybe to the parts in between, you know, the actual war. I will like make the commentary at start and then I'll be in the middle. I'm like, I will not do the whole parts, but I will definitely want to add at least a little bit of commentaries to the other parts. So one more time, thank you very much for watching and I invite you to the actual game that starts at the second position of the playlist. Best wishes, yours out.